All right, so we're going to go ahead and continue on from where we left off. And now it's time to create a AI that will follow a spline. Well, that being said, how do we want to do this? Let's go ahead into our blueprints. We'll create a new class. We'll call it an actor. BP underscore spline. We're going to go ahead and add a spline to it. This here, we want to make sure to name it. This is actually what our code will be looking for. So we're going to call it, um, I don't know, spline. No, path spline. Can't get any more creative than that, sorry. All right, so there it is. Compile, save. Again, we'll try to remember that. Path spline. And now we can come back down here and we're gonna create a, another AI controller. This one we will call, oh, I don't know, AI spline path. Again, I don't think it matters. Not for this anyway. All right, so now that that's up, we can actually close all these so we don't get confused. There we go. And now what we're going to do is kind of put in a, uh, some, well, some includes, right? So we'll start with the H file, of course. We'll break this up again. So we can see it. And to help save time, I'm just going to go ahead and copy some stuff from the other one. Where was it? Right here. We're going to copy all of these. Won't need them there. We'll need them here. The new one we will need will be. Yep. I think that's it. All right, so let's go ahead and start plugging in some of the code here. We are going to, again, use some of the same things. So we're going to go ahead and open this one back up again. This is going to be our public section. Now we need a private. Going to create a spline component there. And then what we're going to need now is a function and a variable. All right, so now let's kind of go ahead and get plugging away at this. So again, what we can do is close this one out and come to the CPP and bare bones the skeleton here for these two. If you do that, you have to remember to take this out of here, which you can just take this and put that in front of it. like that. All right. Now we're not using the same features other than those. So as, as far as the structure. All right. As you can see, I've neglected to mention that we're putting some variables in here. All right. So these are the variables we're going to use. We're going to use a height, a max points, um, and then, of course, the vectors, B and array that we will populate with all the different vectors. Once that's done, we'll kind of do the same process as we did before. That being said, it's time to grab the points. This here actually should be called get spline points so it makes more sense because that is essentially all we're going to do with this is just that so again here we're just going to take that out for now 
and we're going to start typing some stuff into this one, like no tomorrow. All right. I will do my best to explain as much of this as I understand. I don't understand all of it well enough to explain it, though. So that what we're going to start off with is a for loop. So we're going to do for t object iterator. And we're going to do a use blind component. All right. So this is what we're going to this is what we're going to play with here. So the first couple of things we're going to do is declare number of spline points. One of the features of a spline component is a function to get its points. Number of spline points. So that'll give us that number to work with. We're going to need a float. All right. Now we're getting the length of the spline. And of course, the difference is, oh, I'll say, well, let me just bring it out. In case you don't know, you will now. So on a spline, if you click on the end here, that's a point. The length is how long it is. So you can have a difference. So if I take this back here, I just kind of do this with it. You know, so we have three points, but the length is much longer than three game units. So there's the difference. All right, moving on, we're going to need another float value. Current length is zero. And this is just how we're going to iterate through the through the spline looking for our points and, and collecting them all, which brings us to a couple of int values we're going to need. All right, so this is essentially what we're going to do. You know, this one here, the item spacing is the spacing between the items which are spawned along the spline. And then the sample rate. This is what we're going to sample every time. So what we're going to do now is get an F string. And this is just for debugging. And I wanted to throw it in here just because it's another different way of doing it. I will always try to find a new way of doing something. Just for one, my own exposure. And two, possibly to help broaden somebody else's at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the name of this blind component the spline component that we're currently on and make it a string. And then what we're going to do is a G engine. I'm just going to go ahead and save some time. A G engine on, add on screen debug message, default green, of course. But now we're going to do an F string with passing a variable to it. Because of the way this is, you have to pass a reference or a pointer to the string. You can't pass it directly. Now, if you remember, I said it was important to remember the name of our spline, which, well, I didn't do. Path spline. Okay. Just copy it so we make sure to get it correct. And I'm going to put it where I really want it, which is going to be up here. All right. So now with this if statement, what we're going to do is use that variable that we just did and see if it equals ours. All right. All right. So now what we're going to do is create an int, set it to zero. And now we're going to do a while loop. And in this loop, what we're going to do is get an F transform. And basically what we're doing is taking the point and transforming it into something useful for us. And again, I'm not quite sure how exactly this works, but at distance along spline, yep, 
we're going to get the current length. And there's this E spline coordinate space. And we're going to get it in relevance to the world. All right. So from there, what we're going to do with that is we're going to take the current length and plus equals. And essentially, this will increase. So basically, we'll increase the current length to get ready for the next sampling. All right, so now we're going to load our array. And get the location, which is going to be a vector. All right, so from here, we're just going to increment. And that is it for the while loop. And now we're going to do total spline. All right, looks like I might have missed this. Okay, there's that. And I should resolve some of these. Let's go ahead and build because it is a lot of code to be typing. Well, I can already see I forgot to take that out. Needed the semicolon. All right, here we go. That's good news, guys. And from here, we just need to get our moving going on. Spline pointer. We're going to increment that and then have an if, sp if statement. All right. And once this is all done, we're going to move to location. All right, so let's go ahead and try to build that one more time. It appears to be working. I am hoping it stays true to the form. So what we're going to do now is get this to kind of go. All right. Now, I don't know. The one problem with splines, you got to make sure you grab that. So let's try that again. corners on this thing is a little tricky like that hopefully that works all right cuz i want this to kind of curve around as much as I possibly can. All right, we're going to go with that. All right, now you guessed it. We need another guy. Here we go. Duplicate. Yellow guy. I haven't had a yellow guy yet. Let's duplicate that. All right. So how do I get to yellow? Uh, there we go. That's a good, good yellow right there. I wonder how it would look though. Will it give it a metallic gold looking? Yeah. Save it. Make sure it's highlighted. We're gonna have to redo that. I know. Come over here. Select our yellow. There we go. Compile, save, select our yellow guy again, and while we're in here, we'll take care of the AI component. Of which, let's go ahead and make a blueprint of it. All right, so now we can take him and BP spline. Compile, save. Let's drop them in the world. And yes, you've got to be kind of careful. All right, let's 
Hope for the best. Yeah. I'm daring. And there he is. I wonder if he can make it all the way around. Oh, he's doing it. And the question is, will he continue going around, right? I know. I know everybody's wondering. There he goes. All right, guys. Well, I hope that really helps everybody. Talk to you later.